How's it going, Grey Boys? It is week six, and if I'm being honest with you, I just gorged myself on a bunch of deviled eggs at four in the morning. So that's how my day is going. <laughs> we get the chance uh, to play Akron. The Zips are three and one. Uh, <laughs> interesting season for them so far. I believe they started with a win against an FCS team. Lost a close one to Troy, beat Toledo, and then our rivals in Western Michigan. Uh, now they have to come up against us. I'm not feeling super confident. But again, with this team, if we can just take care of the football, we'll be in most of these games in conference. Akron is the better team uh, pretty much across the board. And for the first time in a long time, they are going to be expected to win. Corso jumping off of the Eagles bandwagon. Uh, but we have some recruiting to do before that game. Now, I have gone through and I removed a bunch of players that we were like 3,000 points behind on uh, that were like 90% locked. So uh, I think we have 10 new guys to scout. Mostly low lock cheese, a little bit of guys sitting at that 73% mark. So they should be guys that will have a chance to get. It's just a question of will we find the points, and I don't even think we have all the points to scout them. Bryant Jean, or sorry, Bra Brant Jean. Uh, running back, decently quick at 72 overall. Uh, Going to be more of a power back than anything else. We've got Jamal Hill, the wide receiver. He goes up to a 72 overall. He's got that nice seven, or, uh, 94 speed and 87 acceleration. 58 catching is pretty bad. Good route running, good release. Catch and traffic is okay, but the 58 catching is definitely concerning. Alongside that, he's got 94 carry. So, I, I don't know. He seems more like a running back than a wide receiver to me, but uh, if we pick him up, I guess we can always see where it is. Derek Rollins, the tight end, will drop to a nice 69 overall. He just looks like a mediocre tight end. And our last one, what do we want to scout? Do we look at a quarterback or we'll look at Jeff Fontenot, the wide receiver. Just keep looking at these skill positions to see where we could potentially improve. And I like that a lot. 76 overall for the wide out. 87 speed, 89 acceleration. He's got decent catching. 74, for the 74 spec catch, 76 in traffic and 84 route running. He also has a high carrying up at 92. He looks like he could be a really, really solid player. Now, we do have three visits available to us. We got PJ Carr, Josh Howell, and John Irwin. Uh, and with our visits, we're scheduling these guys to go to either the Western Michigan game or, if possible, the NIU game. NIU is late in the season. The Western Michigan one is a rival, so we will get extra uh, bonus points and XP for that. Uh, and it looks like we're going to send two of them to Western Michigan and one to NIU. And if we just go and take a look at our top overall guys on the board, we're looking honestly pretty solid. The 80 overall athlete, Brandon Lane, we are just 100 points behind West Virginia with Craig McCauley. We're 145 behind Tennessee. Maurice Tate, we are now in the lead above Akron. So this could be a really big win for us this week. Dallas Robinson, we're gaining on LSU within 500 points there. Uh, going to be tough to keep with Arthur Roberts in the guard, and we would really like to pick up an offensive lineman who's that good because, as we know, our offensive line has been struggling this season. But just scrolling through this list of players, we're in a good spot with a lot of them. Some of them we can't really afford to give points to, but I think as you know, we can maybe start to get a couple commits, we'll be in a good spot. And you know, hopefully just some of these guys, we naturally climb up their board. How about a look at our top 25? I think we have some ranked matchups to look forward to this week. Penn State will play Purdue. We've got Florida and LSU facing off in a top 15 or top 10 matchup. Top 15 is between Texas and Oklahoma. Notre Dame and Clemson, not quite in the top 15, but pretty close. Uh, and I think, yeah, that's it for our ranked matchups. How about our Heisman? Early in the season still, so a lot could change. But is there anything interesting? A Georgia quarterback, an Army running back, Joe Frank, 95 overall power back. Yeah, he could probably get quite a bit done on a team like Army. TCU's running back, Jeremy Cox, uh, looking pretty hard. Uh, Robert Morris, the quarterback for LSU, is doing okay. 17 to 23 for 176 yards and three touchdowns is not bad. And then Lawrence Turner, another 
Uh, SEC player, the running back. Not the greatest overall, just 87, but as a speed back in this game, uh, you know, sometimes you get enough flashy plays. Maybe you can make your way up that Heisman board. Well, we can't avoid the uh, inevitable. Let's just get into this game. We are on the road. Playing a lot of teams from Ohio recently. Hopefully we can make it two for one against the uh, the state. Uh, what do we go with? I like having some green in our uniform. I'm kind of thinking green pants with the white helmet. Does that? Uh, let's see. Green pants, white helmet. Yeah, that looks good enough. A lot of options available to us. Akron, I like their uniforms. Um, I like changing it up a little bit though so we're gonna go with the gold pants for them and the zips are a 75 overall to our 72 they have a 79 offense and a 73 defense so that offense is probably going to give us some troubles today we'll hope the defense shows up uh if they can create a couple of turnovers of their own while we hold on to the football the whole game we definitely will stand a chance to win this one coming into this one akron that 79 overall offense, uh, top 20 in the nation right now, picking up a lot of points and a lot of yards. Their defense is doing really well uh, as well, only giving up 20 points a game, which we aren't even scoring that many, uh, and they're not giving up a whole lot of yards. <laughs> this doesn't look good for us. 3-1, and 2-0 and oh in the MAC for them. Their top players, oh, thank goodness for us. Definitely tragic for them. Their top player, their quarterback, Outlaw, Potentially out injured, 88 overall, and then they drop down to the low 80s with uh, 83 overall strong safety and 83 overall punter. Again, for us, it's low 80s across the board, and that quarterback out for the season, essentially a torn bicep. He'll be gone for nine weeks, but they still are winning games, so we'll see what the backup can do. Another week, another beautiful early fall day as we are at Infocision Stadium in Akron, Ohio. Trying to hope for the best. Tails never fails, and that continues to be the case. I don't think we've failed a Tails so far on this season. Now we're just going to elect a kick with the 10 mile an hour crosswind today. Gotta hope. Actually, no, it's not a crosswind. It's a headwind. So this is not going to be a good kickoff for Jones. We'll see what he can do to get this one started, and hopefully the defense... Won't be in too bad of a position to start this game. The ball is fielded. Oh my gosh, the blocking is impeccable. Thank goodness Brandon Johnson just didn't return that very well, but he still got 30 yards. So we will be facing an uphill battle from the start as they start this one from the 36-yard line. Screen play, we missed the tackle. Oh my gosh, we missed two tackles, and that's a huge 33-yard pickup. That should have been uh, maybe for a loss. Instead, we give up the big first down. And this is troublesome, to say the least. The zone blitz on this first down as they will go play action. I bit on that one. I thought it was going to be a handoff. Pass complete. Again, the, the running from the CPU right now kind of hurting these guys. It's a first and goal, but that one probably should have been a touchdown. Quarterback showing no signs of struggling to throw the football early here, even if he is a backup. Stepping back, he's got a man over the middle, and just like that, what is that, three plays, Akron is into the end zone. This one could get ugly really quick as the Zips take a quick 7 to nothing lead. Well, let's hope that Poole can do something for us here, returning the kick. I'm going to bring it out of the back of the end zone just to hope for a miracle, because I know our offense is likely going to struggle on the day, and oh, that's on me. I should have had the corner. Instead, we're inside the 20. Well, let's not play into Akron's game here. Let's just run our offense. Even if it means being slow and methodical, Durham Finch on first down, only allowed to get a yard. That will not dissuade us from running the football. Going with the counter here. Uh, except we're going to flip it to the other side, and I'm going to bring Zach Wilson over, try to get that extra blocking out towards the edge and see if Finch can maybe get something. Edge was kind of sealed. He's got to go up the middle. That's good for four. But it's a quick third and five. Well, we know Albert Johnson's not a great quarterback. And we're going to make his first throw one under pressure. We know that that route is broken for Morris. So we'll hot route him. And on third and five, stepping back to throw. They're bringing pressure, trying to get it away. We find Durham Finch Jr. He makes a nice move. 
And then spins out of bounds. That one could have gone for a lot more, but we will definitely take the 19 yards. Some great downfield blocking there. I honestly thought he was going to spin uh, into the field, not out of the field, but we'll take what we can get. Mark Morris on the little sweep gets four yards for that first down, getting us nearer to midfield. And every time I go into that play selection, I just got to keep reminding myself, even if Akron scores quickly, we don't have to match them. We can take our time. So we continue to run the ball and we pick up another first down in the process. And we just got to force them to try and stop us because certainly they haven't done it really so far. Jerome Simmons, his first carry of the game, trucks over a man and picks seven yards up. We'll see now if we can kind of catch him off guard. Little play action. Second and three. Pressure not quite there. Got to get rid of the ball and we're lucky. Oh, man. That broke down quick. Another third down for us to try to convert. We're going to go read option. Allow Albert potentially to use his legs on this one. And that's the right decision. He trips up over his running back. <laughs> they tried to strip the ball, but he gets the first down. Just like the last game, we're burning a lot of clock on our opening drive. And this one could see us into the second quarter the way that it's going. Finch Jr. again, another five-yard run. Got four carries for 17 to this point. Almost just called a flea flicker. Talked myself out of it. Instead, we'll go with a Jerome Simmons counter on second and five. The edge not sealed perfectly that time. Oh, man, Jerome just barely escaping that defensive end, and it's enough for another first down. So we're knocking on the door of the red zone as we will see if maybe we can find a tight end stepping back again to throw over the middle. We have Zach Wilson and he's got the first and going a little bit more. 17 yard reception that time brings us down to the six. I feel like this is the most complete we've seen our offense look in quite a while. It's not just running, but the running is really, really good. Finch Jr. again just fighting off the defenders we might be a little bit far away to be trying this but on second and goal we're going to go to robertson try the first fullback dive here that one not quite there but jeremy gets us halfway to the goal line there we're gonna call his name one more time akron really lined up over the center there I'm going for this on fourth and goal anyways, but Jeremy Robertson gets into the end zone. I think that's his third rushing touchdown of the season. And with a minute and six left in the first quarter, we have tied this game up. All right, what can we do? Last time, uh, we gave up a lot here on special teams. Hopefully we can hold them. Blocking is okay, but it's not quite as good. Just a 21-yard return. We'll put them a little bit past the 25. And I think part of our issues on that first drive is that I didn't respect their ability to pass. We were bringing some pressure and leaving guys open. So we'll try to avoid that. And well, it's already better because we only gave up four yards to Zach Walker on that first down pass. Really hoping we can slow this backup quarterback down. Second and six. That looks like it's going to be a run out towards the edge. Fox slows him down and then everybody else shows up and Joe Johnson will lose a yard. And now, knowing what's coming, we're going to come out in the cover six, hoping to stop this pass. Certainly, they'll go to the air on this one. They do over the middle. It's caught. No, it's short. They say fourth and inches. I think that's a terrible spot as the receiver's shaken up on the play. And that's actually going to end our first quarter. So the defense might have held them to a three and out as it's tied seven each. Definitely a much better showing than that opening drive where we gave up a touchdown in three plays. Offensively, can't complain. It is the punt team. It is the punt team taking the field to start this second quarter. And it is punted away. No fakes here. So we'll see if Poole can get a couple of blocks and maybe get towards that corner. There's a flag down. So this one is going to come back, unfortunately. Almost certainly a clipping. We're all holding. Holding maybe the better case scenario, but disappointing either way. That one's really going to cause some problems for us as we were going to have great field position, but now we are at the 20-yard line. A lot of room to try to go here if we're hoping to get into the end zone. 80 yards to Paydirt as Jerome on the triple option takes it for eight. 
It's not often that we get the opportunity to hand it off to the running back on that triple option, but we definitely will take that as Finch Jr. Another big pickup. That one goes for 12 yards. So where the offensive line has kind of struggled at times, they're doing a great job opening up holes for the running core. Zach Wilson's going to score! Oh, I feel bad for that corner. Zach Wilson makes the catch as the corner tried to swat it away, and nobody's going to be near him to slow that one down. Albert Johnson on just his fourth attempt of the day gets us into the end zone with a big touchdown. That corner looking a little bit foolish right now. Well, now both teams have their own three play long touchdown drives. Uh, man, our special teams is really struggling. That guy, oh, if he stands up, he's probably gone. Only the kicker to beat at that point. Another 32-yard return. But just how about the change in pace between the first drive and that one? Uh, instead of taking like four minutes, it took 50 seconds. Option out towards the edge. This one's going to be a big first down gain as Joe Johnson gets them across the 45. All right, we are taking a super risky play here. Big blitz on this first down, hoping that we can contain Graham. Getting a little bit stiff arm cheese there. We'll give up four yards again to Joe Johnson. Clint Johnson, the uh, quarterback for Akron, starts this game 5-5. Five of five. Would love to force an incompletion. That one's going to be a draw. Should have been stopped for a loss. Multiple tackles being broken. This man refusing to go down. Joe Johnson is showing some strength. So that puts them across the 40 and definitely in danger here for the defense. It's another completion. And that's going to be almost a touchdown lane. Can't get the tackle. And Graham Walker will take it 30 yards or 38 yards into the end zone. Clint Johnson now 6-6 six six through the air with a pair of touchdowns to his name as we're just trading blows at this point. Well, let's see what Poole can do on the return here. Uh, gotta hope for the best. This one fielded at the one. Decent chance to get across the 25. Blocking wasn't great, but we do get to that mark. And once again, it's the offense out here to go to work, hoping to make it three for three on drives that reach the end zone. We're gonna go play action, pass on first down, getting rid of it quick. Mark Moore sheds a tackle and it's gonna pick up a first down immediately. This uh, Gray Boys team has definitely showed up to play today. I'm really enjoying it. Albert Johnson keeping on the read will slide down. That's another big gain. The offense is really clicking right now. I think we're at about 14 uh, run plays to four pass plays, but we just got to keep it on the ground. Durham Finch Jr. so close to breaking that for a big one. Just barely ran into our blockers. Regardless, it puts us across midfield and again... We're looking to just get these passes off safely, trying to be safe. Oh, that was dangerous on the throw, but it almost worked out perfectly. Mark Morris just couldn't quite get there. It was unintentional, but Albert ended up throwing it over the linebacker and a little bit longer as they want to bring some pressure, and we're going to run right at it. Got to hope for the best. The blocking, again, working really well for us as we get six yards, and we'll make it a more manageable third and four. This might be where our perfect third down conversion rate goes to die today as Simmons has come in and we're looking to run the slip screen. Pass is caught. Oh, that was just ugly, though. That was really, really ugly. Fourth and seven. We're going to go for it. It's a tie game. I don't really mind uh, if we don't make it, so... We're just going to step back and throw, see what can happen. Not bring in too much pressure. Hey, Zach Wilson. Oh, can't quite get to it. That's a, that's just good defense. Simple as that. Well, it's only fair. Both defenses now with a stop. Going to expect them to be passing a lot. A minute and 58 to start this drive. Oh, my gosh. That one was almost a touchdown immediately. We can almost guarantee that they're going to be passing here inside two minutes. So we'll see again if we can slow him down. I would love to create a turnover early in the season. It seemed like we were getting all sorts of interceptions, but that's not the case today as Walters just got burned and Akron might be finding the end zone sooner rather than later. All right, let's bring a little five-man rush here. See if we can pressure this quarterback into that mistake that we need. He throws it up. Fox! Oh, we almost get the switch to him and get there in time. We do force the incompletion, though. 
I don't know if I would quite say that uh, that was a mistake from the quarterback, but we'll take anything like that that we can get. Second and 10, a minute and 38, as Akron is definitely in field goal range. We could be taking our timeouts here. Third and 13, we won't take them quite yet. Zips, uh, kind of the opposite of us. Not running the ball a whole lot. Uh, just four carries for 20 yards, but passing it really well. And with a minute and 10, they will hand it off on third and a mile. They're going to lose three yards. We'll take our first time out and hopefully score. And they're going to kick this field goal into a headwind. This is a long, what is that, 47-yard kick. So Poole will be back, hopefully to return this one. The kick is up. It doesn't have the distance, just barely. Not returnable, but not enough to get over the crossbar. So now we have to uh, really limit ourselves. Two timeouts, a minute to work with. I can be okay with a field goal here. We just cannot throw an interception, and we got to throw safe passes, but part of that is Albert needs to be accurate. Akron maybe is going to get the ball back here, depending on how this really works out for a second and 10. We'll step back to throw again over the middle. We have Wilson, and John has a first down, so we can get into the hurry up real quick. See what we can do here, getting this playoff. 55 seconds now. Right bumper was open. <sighs> kind of forgot that I put him on an out route, though. That one would have been fantastic if he was just streaking, but that's not the case. Second and 10 now. 52 seconds trying to get across midfield. We'll throw the slant. Again, John Wilson. He's going to pick up 15 yards, and that'll temporarily stop the clock. And I've accidentally called a screen. And we're going to run it. Oh, uh, never mind. We've got Y wide open. <laughs> That's not an interception. He was out of bounds. He was 100% out of bounds when he caught that. If they don't overturn this, we riot. Just look at this front foot. That absolutely lands out of bounds first. Refs aren't going to take a look at it. We're going to be forced to use a challenge here. I swear if the game screws us over, that's going to be rough. Challenge the spot out of bounds. We'll see what it what what the game says today. That first that there's no way that that's a catch. Oh please, NCA 14. Oh no, the way that the foot lands. Wow. Really wish that we could use this replay feature before taking a look. Watch what happens with this foot. I think it like does some weird glitch where it slides. And not in slow motion, it's hard to tell because the game obviously wants him to land in bounds. Or he would have probably landed in bounds. But there's no animation, so his leg just kind of slides along as if he's on an ice skate. So realistically, the animation resumes while he's out of bounds, but just unfortunate there. Well, now Akron's got 42 seconds to uh, try and take the lead before the half. That's disappointing. I was a little bit late making that throw, so only have myself to blame. But the defense can maybe get a stop. 9 of 10 now for Clint Johnson. Trying to hold him just to those two touchdowns. See if the zone's going to work. We come out in a cover three with 20 seconds left. And, well, maybe they're just going to let the clock burn down. Send our safeties deep here because it looks like maybe they're looking for a Hail Mary or they're just going to let it burn out. Yeah. One final play. <gasps> oh, I thought we had a chance at a pick six there. Almost jumped it, but instead it's caught inconsequentially. 14 all as we head to the half. Uh, Man, got a little bit sloppy, I think, for both teams at the end of the half there. But for the most part, I'm okay with the way that we've played it. Should, you know, the interception is because we're being forced to pass a lot. And that's going to happen when Albert is forced to throw. But the running has been spectacular. And for the most part, aside from a few big plays, the defense has been more than serviceable. I think we definitely have a real chance, especially since we start this third quarter with the football. Uh, hey, if you're enjoying the video, please scroll down a little bit. Hit that thumbs up. Appreciate it. Well, we can return this first kick of the half. Again, I'm bringing this one out of the end zone. You never know when uh, magic will happen. Decent return already, Pool. Oh, ho, ho, ho. a little bit more speed. He gets away from that guy and at least gets to the 30. We do end up at the 26. 
uh, which isn't the best, but it's also not the worst. We're going to go read option on first down. Albert, oh no. Couldn't slide down because I didn't want to lose yards, but I didn't want to take a hit either. So at the end, we just end up back at the line of scrimmage. And it's second and 10, handing the ball off again. Finch Jr. nowhere to go. The blocking from the wide receiver was invisible, non-existent. It's third and 11. And we're at that spot where we don't want to be in, and that means that Albert Johnson is passing the football, getting it off to Jerome Simmons. He's got a blocker in front of him. He mows down a guy, and the wheel route works to convert on third and long. Albert, 8 of 14 through the air for 144 and a touchdown? That's not a bad stat line for our uh, underwhelming quarterback. How about a triple option on this one? Again, being uh, forced to hand it off, and Robinson takes it. Pat gets eight yards there. That triple option is working really well so far. In fact, it's working so well, we're going to cheese it one more time here and see what read they make. Sam Williams comes in. Robinson is also in. Hopefully, we make the right reads. Oh, that was not the right read with the Oh my gosh, Albert Johnson with the dirty slow motion spin. He's got the first down. Somehow avoids the contact. That one should have never happened. I made the wrong read, but instead it works out. Albert's just able to slide down without any problems. And oh, this could be a problem. I panicked and I just forgot to throw it away when nobody was open. Okay, well, it is second and 18. I have no idea what it is that we can do here. We'll try a counter. That's not good. Time just to yeet it up, I guess. Put Stan on the wheel route. Send some guys deep and hope that something happens. Hope that the offensive line gives us enough time. We're just going to throw it up. 50-50-50-50 ball. Because there was you know, four guys in the area. Just falls incomplete, though. Definitely not the way we wanted to start this third quarter, but we're going to have to punt it away into a headwind. Uh, we might cheese this a little bit. Hope that it hits the ground and just skips past the man. Gets it. Oh my gosh, that thing was rocketing, but it goes out of bounds inside the 10. So Jones ends up getting a monster punt. And we're going to bring pressure on first down, trying to keep these guys pinned deep. We'll see what they can do. Motioning wide receiver over to the right. Trying to jump the snap with Fox. Not going to quite get in there. Quarterback has a man open over the middle. And so much for pinning him deep. They pick up 17 yards and they are immediately out of danger. Just don't think our pass rush is quite good enough. Even when bringing the blitz to get to this quarterback in time. This one a handoff. A little counter. And there goes Johnson for another 14 yards. I know that I literally just said that our blitzes aren't working but we're gonna blitz them again and just hope for the best here pressure gets there not in time pass complete nine and a half yards well the good news is that the defense seems to be giving up yards no matter what so uh i guess we'll just try to rein them in to just short throws short runs hope that we don't give up big plays no idea if that's going to work. Uh, just trying to change up some personnel on the field here on defense as these guys step back again to throw. And again, just open over the middle every time. I think we have to be in that cover one. Talk about a crazy name. That was uh, Bruce Lee that just caught that one. Uh, I mean, there's nothing that we could do there. <laughs> First and 10, a minute and 50 now. And we're going to be there. Oh, I thought it was a pick for sure. That hurts. That really hurts. Saw the curl. The uh, receiver just took a step forward, though, so he blocked the line that I was taking. And unfortunately, it's just incomplete. We do force a third and nine here, and I wouldn't mind if we could hold them to a field goal attempt. Try it to cover over the middle, but I got to put those safeties. I don't want to give up a touchdown here. Stepping back to throw. They go with a screen. I was not paying attention at all. That's, that's brutal. First and goal, just like that. Something's got to give here. Defense has been close to creating a turnover. It just hasn't materialized yet. Where will it come from? The defense, they need to stop trying to get some coverage there. It's just too many guys for me to guard. And Akron's into the end zone. They're going to take a 21-14 lead. 
or maybe not. We blocked the kick. Oh my god, I'm losing my mind. I'm gonna have to mute this, but holy sh**. I have never blocked a kick in my entire NCAA 14 career. And we just did it. Are you kidding me? It was clean. The perfect run from pool. Look at where he is. Is he? They snapped the ball. Absolutely. I mean, he's offside if we're being honest. No, it's literally perfect. He's... Oh, I, I can't believe it. Let's go. In all this haste, I've completely forgotten. I'm not allowed to return this kick. So we'll just take a fair catch. Oh my gosh, I'm losing my damn mind. If that's what ends up winning this game, it's going to be legendary. Uh-oh, uh, not the play that we want to run. Never mind the 21 to 14. It is 20 to 14, and now the offense needs to use this momentum. As Morris with the big catch, he's still on his feet, and just like that, we're across the 45. I thought I was about to throw the pick and just completely ruin the game, but instead it's a big play. I got to reel myself in here. Time to get composed, Goon, and we got to take this one all the way down the field and try to score. Jerome Simmons going to take this carry. Second and seven. No, Albert Johnson is kind of broken. Uh, that play was completely broken. A quicker quarterback that's a touchdown instead for us. It's third and two, and we're going to allow this one to go into the fourth quarter. Just call the hurry up so we can watch the clock run down. I still cannot believe that that happened. I have been trying literally for years to block a kick in this game, and we do it live in an actual moment. <laughs> I can't get over it. So here we are into the fourth quarter. Hey, if that blocked kick isn't worth a like, I don't know what the hell is. If we don't hit like at least 150 on this video, I'm going to be completely confused the pitch out to jerome simmons he's got a lot of space not the most speed but we continue to get closer to that end zone with now 554 left in the game stan williams the third stringer will come in and get a couple of carries and he's got a lot of space and another almost first down nine yards is huge Robinson is now in second and one. We're going to go halfback dive. And that is enough for Pat to pick up the first down here in the red zone. Stand back in. We're going to run the counter to him. The blocking. Oh, no, it was atrocious. Somehow he's still on his feet, though. This team is showing so much fight to try and tie this one up or at least take the lead. Can't be too predictable, though, so... We're going to step back looking to throw only if it's open, and it is. So there's John Wilson in a first and goal for the Eagles. Pat Robinson again coming in to take some carries. That's how much we're running. All our running backs are getting tired. He's got us four yards there. And from just three out, we're going to go off tackle and see what Stan Williams can do. Towards the edge, four minutes left in the game. He's got to cut it back inside. He gets a yard third and goal obviously this is four down territory now and from the two yard line it's pat robertson getting another carry here or no jeremy robertson we got robertson and robinson i'm getting their names confused but we're going fullback dive no matter what and up the middle he's gonna fight his way into the end zone it is jeremy robertson and now because of the blocked extra point we are tied up with a chance to take the lead with three and a half minutes left in the game Kick is up from Clark. We're in control here. Defense has to come up big. Really hoping that our special teams can come in clutch here. Game's a little bit laggy on this play, which is a little frustrating, but uh, maybe that will work out to my advantage as we will stop them. But man, we're just giving up a lot on that uh, the kickoffs. To this point, we've run almost twice as many plays as Akron has. All for one more point, and it's going to be worth it if we can just continue. They run out towards the edge, and we're there for the stop, just giving up a yard. If you're Akron, how worried are you now? Needing to score. If they score the touchdown, they probably need to go for two, and we could stop that as well. They're going to step back to throw all the time in the world. and Nobody's paying attention, but the running back goes out of bounds out in the flat. That could have been 
a huge play, but he just steps out of bounds, and I've called a play that I didn't really mean to. We're only rushing two on this one. This could be really devastating. The max zone is what it's called. They throw short over the middle. And for having nine guys in coverage, we sure let them make that one look easy. I am not ready for the heartbreak if they score with time expiring on this one. 2.34 on the clock. Still in the lead. This one's not going to be picked off. It is caught. He gets out of bounds. There's Bruce Lee again. 15 yards. 305 to 303 in terms of total yards of offense. I'm going to try user Carter here and see what we can do. Is they're going to throw in a rare run play. Allow the clock to start burning down. And we're in trouble because a field goal wins it for them. I can't quite afford to start using the timeouts just yet, though. So we'll hope to just keep bringing the pressure. They do have the wins uh, in their face. So they do need to get close, and oh, that might be enough. Thankfully, it'll stop the clock, but it's a first down to Bruce Lee, another 15-yarder. I'm honestly contemplating uh, maybe letting them into the end zone. I don't think it's time for that yet, but with a minute and 53 and all of our timeouts, I'm certainly worried. It's a halfback pass, and we're going to get the sack. I don't know how to feel about that. But it's a loss of two. The clock just continues to burn down. And the thing is, I think they're in field goal range. We would need to back them up quite a bit if we were going to get this stop. Quarterback's going to scramble. And that's going to help tremendously. A sack for a loss of three. It's third and 16 now. And again, we know a pass is coming here as the clock's going to tick potentially below a minute left to play. I got to use her, Carter. I have to try and get to this quarterback and hope that they miss the field goal. Under a minute now as the play snaps. It's a slip screen. Can we get there? We can, but not quite enough. I've got to take the timeout. I wish you would have gone out of bounds. It's fourth and 13. It's the field goal team out on the field. Not sending anybody back to return and certainly not going to try and block this into a 10 mile an hour headwind. It's up and it is no good. He left it short by about a yard. So right now we have the ball. Up one point with 50 seconds to play. Akron, though, three timeouts to work with. Man, two missed field goals for the Zips, and certainly the kicker is, well, he's kicking himself, but it's on his coach for knowingly kicking that into a 10-mile-an-hour headwind, and that might be uh, just a dagger. Durham Finch, eight yards. A first down will certainly end this game. As that was just a clutch time for him to come back in. Jerome Simmons now getting a carry on second and two. Trying to stretch towards the edge. He's going to have the first down and a whole lot more. And that's going to be it. Certainly, unless something disastrous happens, we're going to take the win. But I think it would pretty much take a botched snap at this point. So Albert Johnson is going to come out in the victory formation. We'll take a knee in Akron. We'll take that final timeout. And I think we will have to technically run two more plays, but Albert Johnson taking a knee once again. Oh my goodness. Clock winding down inside 10 seconds. We'll hand it off to Stan Williams here as the final play of the game. And boy, that could not have been a more exciting option. We'll have him dive to the ground and we can leave Akron with a win 21 to 20 as somehow we block a kick and it's enough to win the game. It's an ESPN instant classic. And in my books, this might be the biggest game I have ever played. <laughs> the most important play or the, the best play of my entire time on NCAA 14. I, I am at a loss for words. Cannot believe <laughs> that I got that uh, on a recording. Big plays all over the place today for both teams, but it's our plays that are just slightly bigger as we come out with the victory 21 to 20. I don't know if it's healthy how happy <laughs> the blocked kick has made me. And it... Even more so that it's the reason that we won the game. 21-20, to 20, a couple of missed field goals for Akron and a blocked kick. And we come out with the win. 17 first downs, 142 on the ground to their 66. And we threw for 172, which is really good for Albert, even with that interception. We did give up 255 through the air, but... I mean, that's just how they play. So, you know, we did what we needed to do. Jeremy Robertson, the fullback. 
is our offensive player of the game with two fullback dives for touchdowns. And Troy Carter, the left end, three tackles for loss in a sack. And how big were those sacks uh, on that final drive to just barely, barely push them out of field goal range? This is uh, this is an all-timer of a game for me. So we improved a 3-2 and two on the season. We'll go ahead and advance towards the Bowling Green game. So once again, we'll be playing another team from Ohio. And I just got to hope that we can continue to beat them. I don't understand what game they just watched, but we get locked out by Arthur Robertson and Chase Perry. I guess they just don't like uh, exciting football. Curious uh, if we got enough XP to level up. I know that we were close. Not quite. We are less than a thousand away, though, as we will get the chance to play Bowling Green, where we'll be favored. And they are a D plus overall. If we don't smack them around, I'm going to be pretty disappointed with that game. We will take a final look around the country here to see what's happening. Last week and what's coming up, some ranked games. Coastal and Georgia will play. Coastal needs to win that, but certainly their prospects aren't looking too good. Nebraska will play a number 10 Penn State. Uh, and Purdue actually just beat that Penn State team. So the number three team fell. They took their first loss. And they'll be looking to uh, get some revenge by beating a, a different undefeated team. Uh, we've got Army playing LSU this upcoming week, as well as Ole Miss and Auburn. So a lot of ranked matchups. Uh, Clemson and Georgia Tech playing as well. So just a lot that could happen. Unfortunately, that is going to be the end of this episode. And if you haven't already liked the video, uh, I don't know if me asking at this point would do anything because we blocked a freaking extra point in this game. That is, oh my gosh, I never thought it would happen. But here we are. Once you've liked it, go down and hit the subscribe button so that you can be notified when these new videos get posted. And then once you've done both of those, head down to the description where you can find links to my Twitch at twitch.tv slash goonmaster. There's also links to my Twitter, our community discord, and of course the college football revamp mod if you're trying to get it for yourself. All that being said though, thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Goonmaster. You guys are the gray boys and you just witnessed a block kick wherever you are have a good night or have a good morning and we'll see you later adios